This is episode eight of the Market Cipher Trader Spotlight. This is our guest, Cassius Cuve. What's up, Cassius? How you doing, man? Good to see man, you. Man, I feel I feeling great, man. I'm happy to be here with Market Cipher, man. Um, this has just been a great community, and I, you guys are some real traders. That's what I like about it. Mark uh, Cassius Cuve is uh, he's a recording artist first, but he's also an amazing leverage trader. So he came into our Market Cipher community a couple months ago, even though he's known Crypto Face for a couple years. And uh, stick around all the way to the end of this interview, guys, because he's got a, a special track just for you guys. We got a couple questions to ask him. And so, um, you know, just as a little intro, Cassius, like anything you want to say before we go into all these questions here? Yeah, man, I just want to say this interview is going to be different. So make sure you guys stay all the way through to the end. Like he said, you know what I'm saying? We got a rap I'm going to spit at the end. But also what I talk about in the trading and my journey is is it's going to be different than what a lot of other traders you see online post. So make sure you, you watch this one all the way through. Awesome, man. All right. So the first question I want to ask you, Cassius, is what's your background? Like, wh where did you come from? And like, how did you become a recording artist? So I'm from Oakland, California. And, you know, really, I've been in the rap pretty much my whole life uh, since, you know, I was growing up. But, um, you know, I you know I was a recording artist for many years before I got into trading. And basically what happened was just in a quick nutshell, COVID hit like many other people. I've always kind of been an investor, invest in real estate. But when COVID hit, stock market crashed. I was like, okay, I got, this is time to focus on this shit right now, right? I just released an EP called Riding My Own Wave. But I was like, uh, I got to put that aside. Let me focus on trading. I learned a ton and I never really was an internet guy. I've always been an in real life type of guy. But I got on Twitter because that's where the information comes quick for trades. So first it was stocks. And I met up. You know, I become friends with people online and like some of these guys are OG oh, been doing this shit since the late 90s. And they really showed me the game. I got into SPACs. I made this song called SPAC Dream after we started trading when all the fervor was happening in early 2021 and everything like that. There was like a whole strategy about the way you trade them. And basically, I dropped this music video, SPAC Dream, and went viral right away over the weekend. Got on CNBC to cover the Wall Street Journal and a whole bunch of other things like kind of just started happening real quick as far as. The, the trade attainment side of things, right? Really, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to trade, but I'm an artist in my heart, so I'm never not going to do art. And then everybody was like, remember, this is February 2nd or something. So this is everyone, like, people that just dropped this NFT. Everyone's like, you got to make NFT, you got to make NFT. And I'm like, what the hell is NFT? Now, I heard of Bitcoin, but I wasn't really into crypto yet. And yeah. when I first got really explained to me what an NFT was, someone had to explain to me what blockchain technology was. And once you learn that, you can't unlearn it. And that's what got me into crypto and learning. About, I, went to, and I went to Bitcoin conference and everything in Miami in 2021. Remember, they didn't have one in 2020. I made an NFT video documentary about the Bitcoin conference. I'm the only person I know who did that, you know. So, like, I'm the first recording artist to ever make an NFT music video. It's on chain, you know. So I did all of that stuff right then and there. And this is kind of before everyone always had the 10,000 PFP projects and everything. So mine was more like art, like one of ones. And ever since then, there's been no looking back. So I've been deep into crypto. Started my show in 2022 called... Popping Crypto with Cassius Cuvee, where I mm -hmm. interview founders and CEOs of different Web3 projects, write a custom rap song about it, and then and then go into the interview, have some fun with it like that, and just been on the circuits ever since, going to conferences, stuff like I said, I'm an in real life type of guy. It, this is a classic case of what happens when an exceptional person comes into crypto. It, it's it's crazy. I mean, you, there's a lot of people in crypto. There's a lot of people who are, are, are crypto born and bred, and like, you know, they kind of go by the wayside because that's the only thing about them, but... Here we have someone who who had things going on before he found crypto. He finds crypto and and he just weaves his talents and his things into that. And and obviously he goes viral right away with it. And so, you know, he, like Cassius, you're you're obviously a huge benefit to to crypto as a whole, man. You're a part of, oh, of crypto's you, history. Um, but also like getting into trading, trading in in many ways is like. I guess bigger than crypto because because you could trade anything you could trade stonks you could trade commodities yeah. you could trade like cryptos you could trade anything um and trading is like really how people like unlock freedom you know because up or down whether crypto goes up or down you know you want to know how to trade right you can't just be like a hodler like forever like like it's it's really it's a really good skill to learn and uh being so talented you know we we're gonna get into how you went from this recording artist, crypto loving kind of background, right? How does it get into, I guess, like the the leverage trading, like, you know, because this yep. is like a big step, right? Going from just yes. a passionate mm -hmm. crypto guy to a leverage trader. How did learning market cipher improve the leverage trading? 
Absolutely. And this, and this is what we're, I knew we we're going to get to it here because this is, this is important. So like I was a trader before you could say, you know, obviously a lot of stock, then crypto, but with crypto, I was more like a, a crypto investor, right? And unfortunately, you know, a lot of stuff was already ran up in 2021. Don't get me wrong. I made a lot of good trades when we had that dip in the middle of 2021, but, and then, you know, then everything ran back up again, but like a lot of those bags I'm still holding, right? I don't know, probably a hundred cryptos, but I was like, look, man, you know, I made more money in my life trading than doing anything else. And, you, you know, your brother, Crypto Face, you know, credit to that guy. He's a good guy, man. And, he, you know, he looked out for me. He's like, hey, man, do you have market cipher? I was like, nah, I don't have it yet. And he blessed me with it. And it's been no looking back. And so now, you know, I'd already been kind of looking into leverage trading. I really wanted to do it last year more so. But I was like, look, man, I'm about to just focus on this shit. And to me, as soon as I watched that first video about market cipher, you know, go on. Anybody who hasn't watched them all, there are free videos out there. Go on the market cipher website. Crypto face, and I think you're on there. And oh, by the way, I think you got you have another brother too who does a little bit of trading too. We do, man. Our our oldest brother uh, also helps us with our YouTube videos, and he does his own trading. And and yeah, man, our whole family is uh, on board. And I love stuff. that. I gotta say, I love the camaraderie, dude. I really do, man. That shit is tight. That's why I like it's like the Market Cipher family. You know, what I'm saying you guys is all in it, and you guys have great videos on there that are like tutorials. So that was the first step. You know what I'm saying? And I'm you know I made the song, I joined the Market Cipher. So, uh, you know, the music video got the cool AI music video and shit. Yeah. Got Crypto Face on there rapping and shit, a little speed rap we for you. We love that you so much, man. We love that. <laughs> right yeah. And uh, but really, I dived right in onto it. And I'm like every day now, every single day, basically all day. I got it on laptops and on desktops. I got it on my phones. You know what I'm saying? It's it's market site for all day, man. And um, it gave me a new perspective. I know we're going to get into it here. I'm going to show you guys some of the charts and stuff I look at mm -hmm. that's potentially a different approach than a lot of other TA guys, because I'm telling you, I'm on this all day, every day. Yeah, we're going to go into some of these trades here, man. I'm excited to see these charts behind you that you got these charts uh, behind you there. I can see them. Um, and yeah, that song, man, you posted so many profits on your on your Instagram story with that song playing, dude, that that song oh, is like yeah. drilled in my mind, bro. Like I, I, ain't gonna I could recite that song cipher. if we're ever um, if we're ever partying like um irl you know in real life like i'm gonna be we'll be singing that song together bro <laughs> all right hey cheers to that right there cheers man cheers it, man. also uh real quick i might have to edit this out but my zoom meeting has like a limit on it so I'm, we might okay. have to like restart the zoom but either way i'll edit this okay. part out um gotcha. so all right caches question three is what are the notable trades you've made using MC? Obviously, I've seen them because I've been David Rebloggins reblogging your uh, your stuff you. on Instagram this whole like this whole time for the last couple of weeks and months and everything. But yeah, show us some of these trades, man. Some of these signals that you've been watching and making money on. Okay, you want me to share a screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's okay. It. Let's let's do a couple here. You know, so we won't go into uh, all of them. Obviously, there's a lot. I'm on this every day. But let's get it popping here with this. Uh... Okay, can you see my chart in here? Yes, sir. Okay, so I don't know how quick you're going to put this out, but this is real time information, right? This is Bitcoin on the daily, and I, you know, I'm going to even show you my Twitter real quick because I just posted this this morning. Because on this on six twenty five, this is my Twitter. You can see what I said here. So Bitcoin bounced perfectly off this trend line I drew months ago, which I did when things were going up. Is this one here? This is the daily, but if you notice what I said after that. The screenshots below are the four day and the weekly red dots. You, we're going to revisit this trend line, I think, which would put us at the price below 56.8. That happened this morning. Okay. Yeah. So man, that's, this morning was, oh man, it was a red. <laughs> it happened this, this morning, morning right? Man. Oh yeah. So I here, woke up you, and spit out my coffee, man. That was crazy. Yeah. So this, this was the first trend line. And here we go. I said about a week or two, you know, a week or so. And boom, here we back are again. So it, it, my prediction came perfectly true. Now, this is what I want to say, though. The key is not this part. And this is where I'm going to get a, perhaps a little controversial here, okay? I want to make this clear. A lot of people do TA showing this part up here. To me, this is the frosting on the cake. This is the cake, all right? And if you notice, when, when crypto first start, starts doing a training, he starts with um, talking about market side for B and these red dots, and and the and the uh, uneven butt cheeks or whatnot, you know what I'm saying? I call it double booty. I don't know why I call it double booty. It just flows off the tongue better, but it's obviously not a double booty, a single booty, uneven butt <laughs> cheeks. You see what I'm saying? And 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 this is what I'm looking at on dailies, but I'm also looking at it on a four day, and I'm looking at red dots on the weekly as well. 
And I'm like, everybody's bullish, yeah. but I can't look in the face of this. Now, so let me tell you my journey here a little bit, okay? And uh, like you said, I'm a little bit newer to this. My first day using Leverage Trading Live Real Money was on April 1st. And if you guys remember a lot of April 1st, is when everything started to take a dump, okay? And so the win, and I started shorting, okay? I seen all this fervor with meme coins and shit, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So my first move was to look at Market Cypher and see everything like up here. And, and start shorting. And if you remember, Crypto Face says you don't want to go into a fight without a backup, right? So you got to have the larger time frames as well. But I got to be honest with you, I wasn't putting as much weight on them because I was mostly shorting and I was mostly right because we were in mostly April was a downtrend. A, yeah, April was a bad month, man. Crypto, it being in the crypto space, we were a bunch of April fools holding on to crypto in April, man. That was a tough month for us. Exactly. But, but that's a relative statement because if you're a market cipher trader, you don't care if it goes up or down, right? This we want to we want to make money and buy whatever way the trend is going here. We're all here for the same reason, right? We want to win trades. So it is what it is, up or down. Listen, I got plenty of long term bags, so it sucks for those. But like, this is what we're doing now. So this trend was coming down, and um, I was making a lot of money off short meme coins, okay, <laughs> more than anything. And uh, so, okay, Let, let's get into the approach here, okay? So what I did was I watched this shit every day, man. I had it up on the big screen on my couch. I'm, I'm in my living room. I'm sleeping in the couch and shit. You know what I'm saying? So my alarms go off. I can wake up in the middle of the night. Like I didn't know, you know, I was like, I really wanted to see the behavior of price versus the momentum waves. Because this was the aha moment. This was the eureka moment for me was the momentum waves. Market side for B. I'm going to be honest with you, man. And I think this is like a cake and this is the frosting. And the frosting is worth about 15 to 20%. This is the 80%. I really don't give a damn. What ink block drawings your favorite YouTuber does up here? If this shit don't coincide with it, it don't matter. It don't matter. I don't care about support and resistance channels, Bollinger Bands. I don't care about uh, EMAs, SMAs, you know, all of that shit. It's, it's cool, but if it don't go with this first, it ain't going to matter. Yeah, no. These ring true. These ring true, bro. Sometimes it should have bounced off the line. Sometimes it won't. I don't want to be in the sometimes business, Okay. These I watched them and I and I know it because I watched them every day. And here's the key. So this is my I'm going to give you my rundown. OK, I zoom all the way in. I see a lot of people with a lot of different strategies. I watch everybody's shit. And they might be like, OK, I do the the four hour and, and the 24 minute or whatever. I don't. I do all of them. OK, I got the one minute, three minute, five minute, 10 minute, 12 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute uh, to me, 24 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, eight hour, 12 hour. Daily, four day, weekly, two week, and monthly. And the reason why is because when you start doing that, you start seeing the pattern here. All of these smaller waves roll up to bigger waves. They really are like waves in the ocean or something like that. And what occasionally happens is all the stars align where all the waves start coming and then they crash. You get what I'm saying? You get one of these or you get one of these. And that's when those big waterfalls happen. Okay. So I don't do price predictions and I know it's sexy to do price predictions. Like who's going to win the fight. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's gambling. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that. I can't give you what price this is. Gonna, I don't know where this waterfall is going to stop, but I can tell you in real time, if I'm an active trader and I'm watching market cipher, I'm watching these, I'm watching these momentum waves. They're going to tell me when it's going to stop. I'll know when we get there. And that's how I was able to catch the bottom. So like, for example, I shorted Pepe, <laughs> which I'm going to get into it this for a second. This is another thing that a lot of traders don't talk about. I'm going to get into this for a second because I learned this. Well, let's talk about Yeah, We want to talk about Pepe okay. and meme coins a little bit because uh, trading meme coins is extremely lucrative. Extremely. Absolutely. Lucrative. So, okay. So here's the thing. Let's, let's talk about this for a second. Bitcoin is your barometer. Okay. Bitcoin is your bellwether, right? That most of the coins usually follow the basic trend. If Bitcoin goes up, things go up. If Bitcoin goes down, things go down. This is why I like crypto as opposed to stocks. I think stocks are more predictable in some ways. But in other ways, this strategy, this is a way of looking at it. And, and, and by the way, I need to say this right now off the top. I meant to say this at the beginning. I told you this off camera. Mm -hmm. I don't trust the news anymore. Oh, Ethereum ETF. I don't trust my favorite YouTubers anymore. I don't even trust my own gut anymore. I trust the data. Oh, yeah. You check the charts. Yeah, the charts is where because this data, is bro. the number <laughs> representation of all that stuff. All the drama, exactly. all the words, all the talk, all the yapping. 
where does it all get flushed into and, and, and reduced into the price chart, you know? And so this exactly. is, and, and market so cipher this, analyzes it. So, so since I've been watching this since April 1st, what I've been doing was I've been watching who have been the outperformers of Bitcoin and who are the underperformers. And that's what this list is over here. And I'm thinking I, on social media or something, maybe I'll release this list or we'll go into more details, but the ones I haven't read are the ones that have been trending down versus Bitcoin. And the ones in green are the ones that have been showing more strength. So like when Bitcoin tanks, these have been holding up better. Jasmine's, OMA, uh, BNB, Pendle, Toncoin, Ondo, Brett, Pepe, Casper. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So these ones have been holding up stronger versus Bitcoin. And some of these other ones, DJ and I make so much money short in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? What does it do? It just goes down, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, it goes up a little bit. So, so my basic premise with, this is what I'm saying, like, People need to tell you what to trade. And I'm, again, everybody has their own strategy. Ultimately, you need to do what works best for you. Don't do what Cash Scuba says. Do the system that works best for you, but be cognizant of what ticker you're trading because the underloved ones usually stay underloved. And now that we saw a downstroke in April, an upstroke in May, and then another downstroke in June, you get a good barometer. Now that we're like in the bull run, right? It's not the bear market, right? We're in the activity I'm seeing who's underloved and who's overloved relative to Bitcoin. Plus, you get more beta. So like you're saying about the meme coins, what more beta means is you get more volatility. So that's how you make more money. Now, be careful, though. As a leverage trader, you'll get fucking liquidated, right? You need to determine your strategy of how much you want to do. I was originally doing 50x on shit. <laughs> okay, I shorted 50x Pepe all the way through that April pump and all the way through the April dump, I should say. Wow. And I got out. That is right at the bottom. And the reason I got out right at the bottom is because Market Cypher told me when to get out right at the bottom. I didn't have a price prediction in advance. You get what I'm saying? I sat there and watched it. Tell me about this Pepe, like the Pepe trade. Okay. So this is because this is what I learned, right? So I caught this waterfall here. All right. This, this April waterfall when everything tanked big right here, right? But what I learned, uh, excuse me, no, no. It was this one here. I apologize. Look, I marked it. But what I learned was, because I, I was actually in a short in both Pepe and Bitcoin at that time, okay? And I started, you see, I, I used to do the thing like this. I started it and I wrote it all the way down and it didn't get, you see, it didn't get to where I wanted to get out at, right? It didn't get down here, right? But what I was looking at was this. You see the green dots down here? Yeah, it's a little bullish in, divergence with the, where the wave is coming up a bit, whereas the price continued down. So it's a disagreement. But in real time, this waterfall happened in a matter of like minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like a crash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it happened hella fast. So it was like, you know, I, I, could, I wasn't waiting for the hour to print. What I was looking at was when, when's the five minute going to print? When's the 10 minute going to print? You know what I mean? When, as soon as I do this, it's going to kick me way back. Um, so in real time, I used market cyber to know when to get out of my trade. But after the bounce happened, what was important to realize is like, oh, well, Pepe didn't even relatively drop as much as Bitcoin dropped. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I started. So then I started reevaluating all these other tickers. I was like, I was like, okay, well, who showed me strength on the recovery of that sell-off? And that's when I started seeing, oh, well, damn, Pepe is is running now. And that was, you know, May 1st or whatever, basically. And so like after May, Pepe ran back to all-time high. Bitcoin didn't run back to all-time high. A lot of these other tokens... May, you know, you know May was a bullish month for a lot of cryptos. And so, yeah, the winners, Pepe was one of the winners in that race. Exactly. Man. Yeah. It yeah. was bullish, but who was it the most bullish for, right? You know what I'm saying? That's the really Ando. important. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm going to be a leveraged trader, I'm only longing the coins that are bullish tendency, and I'm only shorting the coins that are shorting. So sometimes it gets so tempting. I'm like, oh, man, time coins about to pull back. I was just looking at this yesterday. I'm like, ton coins about to pull back, man. I know it's going to pull back, but I stuck to my discipline. And yeah, I mean, I would have made some money on the trade, but what happens is as soon as it goes against you, you'd be like, damn it, I shouldn't have shorted it. Because one time I tried to short, uh, this was actually at the end of, so at the end of May, it was Memorial Day weekend and I'm trading on my phone and shit now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't really like doing that because I was out of town. I was at, you know, I was at my uh, friend's house, you know, and I'm like, let's see, I'm on, looking at Ando. And I was like, it's going to pull back. And it did pull back. Let's see, where was that at? Right here, right? It pulled back a little bit. But instead of that, I was like, you know, let me get the hell out of this and let me get into Degen, my go-to short. 
And look how much this Ooh, looks like. Dang. Wow. I mean, so shorting is super lucrative. Let's talk about shorting real quick. This wasn't even one of the questions, Cassius, but just the overall concept of shorting is new to a lot of new traders, right? And and yet uh, shorting is such an imperative <laughs> skill to learn because when Shorting's a coin <laughs> when any coin is doomed, when any stock is doomed, there's so many charts that are just doomed, right? And if you can yeah. learn how to short these these charts, it's it's free money, man. It's 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 insane <laughs> how lucrative shorting can be. So tell me about shorting it's... these absolute crapper charts and like how that's been going for you. <laughs> I remember when I first showed my homeboys, I'm like, you guys got to get on Market Saver. We were on a little pumped out fun type shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, he's like, and I showed him, you know, when I first started showing, he's like, you can short shit coins on there? That's what they say. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I was like, that's what I'm trying to that's tell you. Make, that's how you make more most of your money. That's crazy. 80% uh, right? of your profits in trading are probably going to be right. shorting like crapper right. projects. Not going to lie. 100%. So I was like, man, I don't even give a damn about long and anything. I'm trying to short this shit. I, I'm like, I'm getting to the point where I can't wait till the bull market is over so I can short this shit all the way back down. And down. Yeah, <laughs> I want everybody to jump in and then fall out, man. I'm going to become rich. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's, that's anyway. where that joke comes from where it's like, like when you talk about Bitcoin and people at the coffee shop, it's like you're just hunting for exit liquidity because like, because yeah. you're an evangelist when Bitcoin's going up, right? But then as yeah. the charts unfold, like they get bored of the price action, but you're locked in. And the, yeah. the natural evolution is like you learn to trade in sideways and then you learn to trade down because you're locked in. No. And and those people that you like you were talking to months and months ago, like, you know, it's like they're basically wow. your exit liquidity now. So it's that's why I'm more I'm a little more careful now about, you know, talking about Jesus coin because because there's points in the market where, uh, you know, I'm just making money shorting, bro. Not going to lie. Yeah. But, but this is this is why this is to me. A market cipher trader in a nutshell is you trust the tool, okay? I don't have a bullish or bearish, like, biased in general. I mean, I obviously think long-term Bitcoin's going up. Got a damn Bitcoin pendant, okay? I believe in decentralized finance. But as far as being a trader, that's different than a long-term investor. You really got to do some soul searching and ask yourself what you want to be, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I got my long-term bags. I really don't touch them. As a trader, though, and specific, specifically a leverage trader, if you're trading leverage, bro, like you got to like, there's a limit, you, you know, like when you're wrong, you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you liquidate. So it, it kind of, I like that in the sense that it gives you a forced barrier. You, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you kind of have to have the discipline or else you get, you know, you get humbled real quick when all your money is gone. And and by the way, too, I got to say this, we were missing, I didn't say this from the opening outset, all the advice anybody ever gives you about anything or tips or tricks, Risk management is the most important thing. At the end of the day, if you lose all your money, you're out of the game. So don't feel bad about cutting losses. It sucks to lose trades. But, like, if the data is showing you you're wrong, you cut your loss and you get the hell out, man. Because if you lose all your money, you're out of the game. And what are we talking about? You know, so risk management is the most important thing. I've lost money trading crypto before, obviously, and getting into it in 2021. And it was better to cut losses on a lot of things instead of ride it all the way down to nothing. So I definitely want to always throw that out there. That but goes, that goes into that goes into my next question, man. It was question yeah. four was like the biggest tip. Uh, like, what's the biggest tip you have for beginners getting into online trading? Would it be risk management? Yeah, it's, it's, it's bankroll management. Yeah, because if, if you lose all your money, you're not going to get what are we talking about? Right. You know what I'm saying? You're just on the sideline watching. Now you can't you can't play. So a lot of people have the rule of thumb of you don't risk more than one percent of your portfolio. I'm not mad at that. One to three percent. I'm not mad at that. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? And it, it gives you a chance to cut your losses, get up, go for a walk. I don't know, go outside, take a day off, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And kind of regroup. Um, I'm more used to it now. Like I said, I'm new to leverage trading, but I've been training since 2020. So a lot of the emotional scarring is already, <laughs> I'm, man, I'm already past that part. So it's kind of easier for me to, you know, I should have been leverage trading to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I wish I had Mark Cypher in this shit way back. You know, I, I don't really see myself ever going back. To the old ways when people anybody shows me new coin now first thing i do is see if i can trade it on my leverage account if it makes or buy bit and if it ain't on there in leverage i'm probably not interested you know uh so you know other than my, my there's, there's so many coin. people i've talked to man who like don't know anything about crypto in general let alone trading and and yeah it's like it's a big hurdle for them to wrap their head around leverage trading and so like anytime i can ask someone you know, what, what can you give to beginners okay. as opposed to like, yeah. like in terms of like getting into this, like, 
Yeah. Like, like what, what do you have for them? Like someone who, like maybe the fighters who are watching this, who like are watching my content thinking, man, I want to like take some of the profits I'm making in these fights. Cause they're working their asses off. They're slaving away in the yeah. gym, getting yeah. their, like kicking ass, but also getting their ass beat. And it's like, it's like you, they're working for their money. If anybody who's out there working for their money, obviously that's, that's amazing, but, but you want your money to work for you. And, and like leverage trading is a really good way to get your money working for you, you know? So, so what do you have to say to these people? I, I got to say, you want to, you want to dedicate some time to leverage trading, you know, because, you know, obviously if it goes against you, you'll get liquidated. Now, the, the, the first thing I would say when you start is you start small, you start 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. You're going to see a massive difference between 5x and 10x leverage on how fast your money is moving like a massive difference. It seems like way more than twice as fast. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So don't, you don't jump right into 30 X or 50 X or hundred X or anything like that. You'll notice a difference between two X and five X. So you start small and experiment with you and be like, Whoa, that moved fast. You know, you know what I mean? Like you see, it really is five times as much. You get what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, <laughs> it starts going up kind of like exponentially on how crazy it gets. So start small would be my first suggestion on uh, leverage trading. Anybody who's new to leverage trading. And then what happens, you start getting a feel for it. I know I can comfortably put 50X on any Bitcoin trade I do because also, and this is very important, you got to know what ticker you're on. Bitcoin's not as volatile as all these other shit coins. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, Bitcoin moves 1%, 50X is not that big a deal. But 50X on something that moves 5%, oh, you're liquidated. You know what I'm saying? So like, you you know, you're going to you're gonna do, you're going to see the difference. Um, uh, but I think, and this is my perspective is, Find your coins that downtrend and sh only short nose. Don't risk the one that everybody's going to jump back into to buy the dip and is going to shoot straight back up. You know what I mean? Like I have my little knife separate. catch. Go with the trend. Understand that oh, leverage yeah. leverage scale is like going from one to two X is twice the risk. Going from two to four X is twice the risk. Like it scales up quick on you. And, uh, yeah, and what it's, was, it's twice yeah. the risk of two X. It's four times the risk of one X. You get what I'm saying? Like it's yep. a big fucking difference on the, when you see how fast the money moves. Oh yeah, man. I mean, nowadays- I, I'm like, not gonna really explain it to you. You're gonna have to do it yourself, basically, in experience. Most folks we see nowadays that are experienced leverage traders are usually dabbing around 3X. You know, it's like they're 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 using leverage as a tool. Um, that being said, it is relative. Like you could have a high leverage trade, but your position size, you know, the, the capital that you have in is a small percent of your total capital. So, you know, even if, even if it did get liquidated, maybe it's maybe that liquidation is only like one to three percent of your capital. So it is relative. It's what matters mostly in a trade is what's the most you can lose in this trade. If that amount yes. is within reason for you, then then it's an OK trade to take. Right. Correct. And like, for example, there was a guy trending Pindle. I, I have been looking for an entry on this. Uh, I took a dump period. There's a lot of shorting going on for some weird reason. But somebody caught the bottom of this 100 X did up when it bounced real quick, you know, and, and he made like 200% on this little bounce. Okay. <laughs> so, but that was his plan. You know I mean? He saw something quickly oversold, you know, he probably was looking at like the 10 minute. I don't know if he had market cipher or not, but like, you know, you see, you see this, you see this green bounce right here. You see down here, he caught this little one and got out, you know what I'm saying? On, on a hundred X leverage, you know? So like, that was that strategy that really depends on your strategy if you want to be a more long-term pin to holder you know you're not you're not, you're not doing 100 x you know what i'm saying because it might go lower on you <laughs> yeah. get liquidated i mean 100 x so, on a shit coin man that's like that's got to be suicide because those coins whip around like crazy man but if you trust market cipher you don't need like 100 x is so much leverage that you can get you can catch that bounce i mean I, you know listen man i have watched market cipher and when everybody else was bearish or bullish I'm was, this is the thing, man. No one likes it when you go on Twitter and YouTube and you, and you say a bunch of negative shit. And the reason why I kind of stopped posting, I want to tell you this too. The reason why I kind of stopped posting a lot of my wins is because I've been making more money shorting than I have longing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, at and, first, and Twitter is like, up only, man. It's a Twitter, it's crypto Twitter is up only. <laughs> so I noticed, you know, I'm making a thousand, I made like 1100% on a trade and I posted and yay me. And I'm getting a lot of crickets and I'm like, oh, because I'm posting on the day that everybody lost their money. I don't get off on that. I know some people are contrarian and they love being the jackass. If you like, ha I made money from all you. That's not really my style. I'm not really like that. I'm doing it more for the education aspect of it. 
So I kind of stopped posting some of those on a day that I know everybody lost money. But I'm like, you guys, I'm look, you have, you got the same tools I got. What the hell are y'all looking at? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm looking at Bitcoin and somebody text me. This is this is a hell of a thing. Uh, uh, I wanted to tell you this because like, it was, it was the night before last when I posted that 12 hour, I posted the 12 hour on Bitcoin. You guys can go back and look at my Twitter. I posted the 12 hour on Bitcoin. I said, rut row. I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a, a blood diamond on, on a 12 hour here. You guys see this? And I'm like, a lot of people were calling for things like 66K and stuff. I had this one little line I drew hell long ago. Sure enough, it bounced off it twice. Once I seen this 12 hour, I'm like, you guys, man. like, man, this look is at not that blood I'm... diamond. Oh, my and Lord. That's what I'm saying. I posted that. And then not only that, you give me a red oh, dot. Oh, the here. red dot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it plays out and then forever, what too. What else? The one day I was doing the same thing. This was already red. Well, don't even this get me started red. on the. I mean, look at the two week, man. Look at the two week. On, that's, we're that's, losing that sixty line. Bro, yeah, I mean, all of this shit is red since April. The since monthly's it, it, been scary for for a long time. Since right? April, I posted that, and then it did bounce back. Monthly's a little bit different because it's such a long time frame that you can get a long upwards, you know, opposite move of the dot. Mm -hmm. But you keep it in context when you start seeing everything roll back. And I got a two week red dot. I got a one week red dot. I got a four week red dot. I got a daily red dot. And I got a 12 there. How can I be bullish right now? You know what I'm saying? How, how can I, you know, especially when I see that. So I posted that and, you know, somebody called me uh, and said, I'm not going to say my own boy's name. He's like, what's the red, what, what's the blood diamond mean? <laughs> you know? He like literally hit me up because he's seen it on Twitter. And I'm like, bruh, he's like, I've been telling everybody this is going to be a green week. I said, look, man, I can only go by what the data is telling me. You know what I mean? And then sure enough, here we are bouncing off this trend line I drew months ago. Some of you know? some of Market Cypher's best trades that it'll give you are, are those times specifically when, you know, you're seeing something cut and dry on the charts with Market Cypher. You go on crypto Twitter or you look at crypto YouTube or, or whatever, and, and it's the opposite of what you're seeing in the charts. There's a disconnect well, there. And, you know, in life, you know, when you see those disconnections and, you know, when there's a lack of truth in any in any space you're seeing, that's a window of opportunity. It's like it's easy to say, oh, why is it like this? But but that disagreement between people's opinions, the sentiment and the and the facts, the data, that's precisely what you want to see. It's it's in those points in time where where that's when the money's made. And so, man, good job sticking with your guns and and, and uh, really learning this stuff and. I think you gave some good pointers to beginners to getting into this, picking good trending charts, going with the trend, recognizing the risks and benefits of leverage. You talked about both of those. Um, and so, yeah, we, you know, we, we could wrap it up here. I just want to call out one more. So everyone was bullish. <laughs> we're up here saying we're going to go to all time highs. And, you know, we got a little green pump, but then we start seeing red here. This is the 12 hour, but you know, it, it, it you know, translated to this as well. And I'm like, Look, man, I said it again. This shit up here is the icing. This is the cake, all right? A million people are going to show you all kind of TA from up here. So that shit is, a, it, it's a trap, man. I'm telling you, this shit is a fool's errand sometimes, man. Because what happens is you get a number in your head, okay, 66K, 66K, it's going to go to 66K. And you, keep, you start brainwashing yourself thinking that this trade is going to go there. I say, take what the market gives you. When you watch my Twitter and my channel and shit, like, I don't usually give price predictions. I've been saying this for years. I can't tell you exactly where this is going to land, but now that I have market cipher, all I'm looking at is the momentum waves first. You have the you directional component to it. Yeah, you see, I mean, That's clearly I you guys can money. see, you guys watching this can see how like that top here, we tweeze your top out, you see the waves trending down. It's a it's a bearish divergence. It's like you watch one market cipher tutorial and we teach you how to trade this exact pattern, this, this standard bearish divergence. And it's it's old school, you know. It's old school oscillator knowledge, and it's still paying in 2024, man. It's it's beautiful. I'm an oscillator trader, man. That's what it is. I'm an oscillator trader. And pardon the rhyme, but I guess I am a rapper, so I'm an oscillator trader, man. And I, I, all this other stuff can give you additional confluence. It can, but what happens is when I don't even think this is 50 percent of what's important, you put more emphasis on it than probably what you deserve, what it deserves. And that's when you, you think, oh, it's going to bounce off this trend line. I'm going to catch this knife or whatever. And then it goes lower on you a little bit. So, I, you know, everyone has their own style of trading. At the end of the day, the main thing I want you all to take away is do what works for you. I'm going to probably start less listening to other people because even me, their numbers creep into my brain. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I need to look at this and then see what's going on here. And I'll be better for it. Beautiful presentation, Cassius. Really appreciate you taking the time, man.
And um, man, just to kind of lighten lighten the uh, the mood a little bit, I had one last question for you because I know you've been traveling a lot, Cassius. And uh, let me click yeah. off the charts here real quick. Okay, let's stop the share screen. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so so tell me, man, like you've been going on a lot of trips, meeting a lot of cool people. Um, what was like the coolest place that you've been in the last year? And just like tell us a story, man. Tell tell me a story of like the I got, coolest well, thing you know, I gotta say it was Miami, man. Last year at Bitcoin Miami, okay. I went down there. Uh, you know, I went down there with Ben Armstrong. This is when he still had his channel and shit. It was right right before the Bitcoin shit. And uh, I filmed a music video as soon as we got there. Uh, it's back. It's called a Bitcoin Miami with him, right? The shit went viral. I had seven hundred fifty thousand views right away. It was right before the day the day before the Bitcoin conference. I had to film everything on my phone, edited it right then and there. That was fun. Uh, I met. Your, your brother down there, right? We were at Gareth's house or his, you know, place he was renting or whatever, big party. Mm -hmm. I met Crypto Face, you know. It was party after party at the rooftop party with Ben Cohen, you know what I'm saying? All my influencer buddies and everything like that. And it was just a great vibe, man. And in real life, my boy Will always says in, in, in crypto, in real life, crypto is always a vibe. You know, my first crypto song ever was called In Real Life, okay? <laughs> you see it on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Like, because it was about going out and meeting everybody. And to me, I, I like the crypto community. And by the way, I like it when it's camaraderie and not all this banter and shit talking back and forth, man. You know, I've been able to avoid most of the controversy and I never was involved in any kind of rug pulls and shit. And probably if I was a better shiller, I'd have more followers right now, but I'd be keeping it a buck with y'all. So, you know, it's not necessarily the flashiest thing. I'm an artist. I'm always doing my art. But hanging out with folks and genuinely connecting with people, that's what I like to do. That's beautiful, man. Thank you for, for sharing that. I wish I was at that uh, meeting myself personally, but I think I was yeah, just too. handling some other. My brother and I tend to, to like divvy up duties. Like he'll go to one thing, I'll go to the other thing, and we split right. up. So, but man, it's going to be a pleasure to meet you when we do finally meet Cassius. Sure, man. You're a killer trader, a talented artist. And um, and it's like you said, man. You're a, you're a positive influence in the space, and so that's why your following is like, you know, it needs to grow. <laughs> so pull up your YouTube real quick, man. Let's get your your social medias up on the screen here. And we got some for you, as promised, man. I got some bars that we're gonna spit for y'all, man. It's some real shit. If you guys really know rap, you are gonna notice this song, the beat that I'm rapping over, and you are gonna recognize this throwback. Yeah, we got a good uh, song from Cassius here for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy the song and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the interview. Lots of good value here coming from Cassius QV. Good to have you in, man. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, bro. Cheers. Yeah. I mean, like, I gotta be the pioneer of this trade of Tammy shit, you know? I was the one on the cover of the Wall Street Journal when they was buying Twitter followers and shit, man. I was the one on CNBC rapping about trading this shit, man. Put on the biggest stage for anybody, man. Bottom line. Now let's see how many real rap fans fuck with Marcus Simon. Check. I retired a hit maker on fire, I spit vapor. Join the market site for inspire and get paper. Pushing price up and down like the top of the roller coaster at a hundred K over. Be swollen as the flopping groper. I ain't talking broker when I say what's cracking. Post your gains, not bragging, just to show what happened. See, the MC caters to nothing but real traders. It gave us a better edge than a gamble in Las Vegas. Some people got fantasies, and I ain't trying to damage y'all, but I always kept it real. I ain't never believed in Santa Claus. Y'all be chasing trends like a school of fish. I've been knew how to swim. I can win in this foolishness. What's going up in here? I ain't wanna duck in fear. You wanna trade memes? Fine, in here. Hold my fucking beer. Long term utility, they stay fading. So fuck it, I'm making a living off day trading. Stocks, Forex, or just a crypto lifer. Either way, you getting paid off using the market cipher. Hit my referral link. Get your whole team joined. We'll run for president just to pump your own meme coin. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm going to swing mine. Looking at the charts like green is green, fine. I don't care if you don't pay attention to all the shit I played. The only thing I pay attention to is the momentum wave. There's a lot of tickets that I think I may buy. Shoot, they claim AI, but they don't really say why. Pencil next talk a bunch of shit, but really need to shut their lip. 100x, double it, and go buy the fucking dip. That's apologies, and it hurts for me to say this. But I'm still inadvertently intimidating haters. The speed rap went over your head. I'm going to slow it down. Versatile, any style, I'ma hold the crown. The king they hate, like eating pork when it's Ramadan. I only fire back if Andrew Tate and Elon respond. See, I ain't playing games with you fucking lames. You came with a troll? <laughs> I came for the fucking games. 
Everywhere I look, I seen vultures. You here for the meme culture? I'm here for the green culture. I'm focused on filling up these extra big bags. I'm talking rags to the riches like the kids from the past. Got the game from the school of hard knocks. I never skip class. I'm from East Oakland. We ain't playing with your bitch ass. I feel spat dream. I guaranteed it make a big splash. The song hit fast and gave financial news whiplash. Proved I can go viral as many times that I wanted. I just don't give a fuck about the likes or a comment. I don't need to go out of my way for the attention. Nowadays it's kind of strange. People pay for the attention. Coinbase sucks. You trade like real cucks. You made nine cents a coin. I made four bucks. Multiply by whatever. This is 45 the leverage. Winning all the hedges and cuvées the beverage. Fine, I'll trade memes and anything else. Baby, I choose rich. I'm like, give me the wealth. Like Jay-Z, this song is most important. It's throwback. Don't talk to me about rap if you motherfuckers didn't know that. Long-term investors, y'all funny to me. Making money being you, but still you want to be me. Guess for every percent you make, it's like a hundred for me. But now you hating to see they feature me on CNBC. Yeah, it's funny how one meme can fuck up the game. Oh, you only bought spot? You better get your change. You can't hundred X leverage? and switch exchange. You ain't sniped a thousand percent? Fix your aim. Imagine the Imaginary traders, man. You could probably hop in my comments and ask for some stupid shit like, hey, yo, dog, how much does the average MC trader make an average day? Now, 30 to 40 grand cops up a beat it.